City of Belgrade, January 21st, 2015, 11.15 a.m. Hi, Tessa. Hi, Terry. How are you? Super about yourself. Pretty good. Well, that's good. Say, um, I asked for the um, minutes of the last um, meeting, meeting, and I did not send them to you, did I? No, you didn't. Okay. So I was wondering if, uh, if uh, you're You off. want the January 5th? Fifth ones or the December? It oh, it's was December. The one January is December fifteenth was supposed to be ready on January fifth. Yep, yep, and those are ready. Okay, and then do you have the January fifth ones? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll take both of them actually. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, also, I contacted your Spooner and Glentz, and I told them that I wanted the bills that they submitted for uh, August through November because apparently. The November 17th minutes state that uh, they weren't authorized to be prosecutor and city attorney. Okay. Spooner Glentz Law Office PLC has, act, has been acting as city's attorney prosecutor since August 18th, 2014. At this time, the council discussed hiring Bill Spooner as attorney prosecutor but never made motion approving it. Correct. So I presume that there was a resolution passed authorizing that. Yes. Okay. Should have been, yep. Okay, so then you can send me that too, please. Let's see. And then, uh, according to the December 1st minutes, uh, there was the acceptance of the letter of resignation for Derek Bajork, mm -hmm. dated November 17th, 2014, effective November 30th, 2014, which you admitted is not a full two weeks. Mm -hmm. And on the Facebook, for the Facebook fanatics, it said Renee Lynn Roth Bajork, November 18th, 2014. Everyone who felt my son Derek was a good chief of police, go ahead and call up each and every council member this evening and thank them for making Derek work environment so hostile he put in his two-week notice. Mm -hmm. That was November 18th, so obviously the letter, I don't believe, was dated November 17th. I do believe it was dated November 18th. But I'm not going to argue that, seeing so I don't have access to that information to start with. So I, I would not lie to make up a date like that. I okay. I know it was dated the 17th, but I did not personally get it in my hands until the 19th. Okay. Okay. All right. Yes. Okay. Well. So then. that's what the letter is dated. Okay. But until I physically had it in my hands was okay. not until the 19th. Okay. Well, I didn't see. That's in a little detail I didn't hear before. Okay. So, yep. Okay. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Okay, also on uh, December 4th, 2014, I contacted your now interim police, uh, police chief, Paul Wegner, mm -hmm. and I asked for the policy and procedure manual the, uh, for the police department in Painesville, the personnel handbook and data practice manual. Mm -hmm. And I think I informed you that I'd never received that, and instead I was you know, receiving some threats from their city administrator, and then I contacted their mayor, and he hung up on me when he asked if I was recording the phone call. Okay. And I sent him the the mayor the policy or the uh, policy and procedure manual from the Maplewood Police Department, which clearly states that recording phone conversations is completely legal. Obviously, he was upset because either your now interim chief of police called him up or the city administrator and warned him that I was going to be calling him. And I can't vouch for anything that happens in. Pizza. I understand that completely. I'm just stating <laughs> this for a fact because if your chief of police, who is currently illegally withholding this information from me, will do that. Then he will do it now. And I, yeah, I can't. I'm not saying that you are. I'm just stating this for the record. And I will inform you that I have been speaking with the police officer standard and training board, and your now interim chief of police, Paul Wagner, is on that list of law enforcement agencies. I told them, the post board initially that I had a list of 20 to 30 names of who I was going to send off who are illegally withholding public information. Now, after I've been sitting there compiling the list, it's up at over 30. Okay. So your interim chief of police is on there, so just for you to know, mm -hmm. and I understand that uh, you're considering having a joint operation between the Painesville Police Department and the, and the Stearns County Sheriff's Department for your law enforcement. Is that correct? I don't have anything to confirm that at this point. Okay. Well, I just want to tell you that your Sheriff Stan Sanner is also on my list of people that I'm sending off to the post board also. Okay. And um, so I was wondering what happened with um, Officer Kluver then? She's currently still with us. Okay. So did she read my complaint at that meeting? Um, from what I was told from the chief, is, or Chief Wagner, 
um, is that with their police policy procedure and how it mm -hmm. handles with complaints mm -hmm. that it does not have to be read into. I didn't say it did. So. Um, but so it was not read into okay. the meeting. Okay. But what happens is, is the supervisor looks into it and does an internal investigation. And that's what he is working on because he received the complaint against her. So he is internally working on that okay. to investigate. Okay. So, it. so it's not decided yet. No. Okay. I will inform you that I am going to be forwarding both complaints against Derek Bajork and your officer Kluver to the post board. Okay. So I'm just putting you on notice of that. Okay. I did receive some information from your uh, officer, er, from chief. Yes, from yep. the chief. It's these reports that obviously were made long after I reported this incident at the Belgrade or the Bruton police or the airport. Yep. And uh, let's see. It says that. Um, Chief Bajork contacted the Minnesota Department of Agriculture on December, or August 5th, 2013. He says he does not have any information on who he spoke to or, or whatever. And it also shows that in this report that uh, Officer Olmscheid, you want your other nope. folder there? That's fine. Thank you. Uh, Officer Olmscheid uh, also contacted the MPCA on Monday, which would be the uh, whatever day. That was in July. Okay, yeah, well, but she was out at the airport on July 26, 2013, three days after I was out there. Okay. So, and then she took some pictures. Of course, by that time, all the evidence was essentially destroyed. And then, of course, the chief did not contact the Department of Agriculture until August 5th. So, and I was checking on the, uh, the, the weather, and apparently it had rained a few different times in between there. So I'm sure that's why the chief was waiting for... Um, to contact anyone if he actually did contact anyone and, and I can't vouch for any of that so. well I, I understand that I'm just mm -hmm. stating what's what's happened or what I've what I've been presented with mm -hmm. now if the chief and your officer Olmscheid or Kluver however she wants to be described uh, actually contacted these organizations then there should be a report that goes along with it there should be audio recordings of the conversation mm -hmm. now I say that because the same pilot uh, who was out here doing these little shenanigans at the airport crash landed in Swift County. Okay. So I have the, the incident reports for that. They were reported to the FAA or NTSB. I don't remember exactly which one it was, mm -hmm. but the phone calls to the proper authorities are recorded, so I do have a recording of that. Okay. So again, I, I don't believe that, I, I do believe this is all manufactured here too because okay. You know, unless I have the audio recordings, I'm not going to believe it. And even if I do get the audio recordings, I have a hard time believing because I have an audio recording of your chief fabricating a phone call to me. Okay. All right? Mm -hmm. Which I do have on the Internet, and I did do believe I presented to you. So. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. So that's the situation. I'll let you have my notes here just in case okay. you Sounds good. need to uh, refer to them. But uh, also, you may want to inform your um, attorney, uh, Spooner and Glentz, that I'm also going to be filing a complaint with the Lawyers Professional Responsibility Board. So, you know, they want to somehow mitigate what they've done so far. They probably want to get me my information that I've asked for. But I, I certainly will be. There's going to be a numerous, you know, prosecutors from this county that are going to be reported. So, okay. so that's what I'm working on also. So I, I've got a lot of reports i got to write. So. Sounds that way. Well, I appreciate your time, Tessa. You take her easy. All right. We'll see you later. Yep, bye now. Bye.